Thank you, Marianne. Um, and hello, everyone. And I will turn off my video uh, to ease the uh, uh, connection. Marianne, could you play the, the small video that I... Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Absolutely. Here we go. Each year, more than a billion people around the world require treatment for a neglected tropical disease. Add to this the relentless risk of a range of vector-borne infections, and you have a group of diseases that affect over half of the world's population. What's more, global trade and travel make even more people vulnerable. Here at the Infectious Diseases Data Observatory, EDO, we are helping to reduce this number by assembling information to improve treatment and control on a collaborative data platform for use by the health, research and humanitarian communities. We want to ensure safe and effective treatment for all patients affected by neglected and emerging infections. EDO aims to generate reliable evidence and innovative resources that enable a research-driven response to the major challenges of infectious diseases, especially in low- and middle-income countries. We collate and standardise clinical, laboratory and epidemiological data within a framework that ensures equitable sharing of data and fair recognition for data contributors. Our unique data sharing processes enable the combination of different types of data from different locations and studies. Data are harmonised to allow rigorous interdisciplinary investigation of key scientific questions. Analyzing globally aggregated data provides unparalleled statistical power to answer critical public health questions that cannot be addressed by individual studies, such as the effects of specific treatments on very young children or pregnant women. We also ensure the security and accessibility of data so it can be productively used by the health and research communities in the long term. By engaging with the EDO community, you will be helping to develop accepted data standards and improve data collection practice. Facilitate data aggregation to improve the power of research results. Identify knowledge gaps that will inform future research priorities and ensure that the results of research and innovation reach the communities and countries affected. You will also be able to create further opportunities for collaboration, meet the requirements of journals and funders, and increase the visibility of your research. Infectious diseases cannot be tackled in isolation. It's only by working together and sharing data on a global scale that we can reduce the devastating impact of neglected diseases and emerging infections. So, make a start today. To find out more, visit iddo.org. So as an introduction, we, we started this work um, not on neglected disease per se, but on malaria, and it was uh, 11 years ago in 2009, and the project started uh, uh, with a secretariat based in Oxford, but with regional center in, in, in uh, Dakar, Senegal, in uh, Kenya, in Nairobi, uh, in Bangkok, in Thailand, uh, and in Cape Town, in South Africa. And as of today, both centers still exist, and there have been a few more centers ex expanding uh, in Australia and in Indonesia um, and in Latin America. The project uh, started uh, on malaria and, co and, and is called, still today, our malaria hub is called WARN and stands for Worldwide Anti Malaria Resistance Network. Um, and so the idea was specifically focusing on resistance, but we expanded our remake very rapidly. But we could uh, compile data that were accumulated and generated by investigators around the world into a central data uh, platform, whereby we will uh, curate and, and standardize the data and, um, and uh, analyze this data uh, doing what we call IPD uh, meta-analysis or individual patient data meta-analysis. As you can see from the, the slide, and this is just used as a proxy of the volume of funding, I suppose, but also data which are generated. If we look at the International Clinical Trial Registry platform from WHO, which is a registry of registries, and you look at the volume of data 
on publication which has been uh, on clinical trial uh, registered this is what you what you get so huge amount of of, uh, of uh, clinical trial uh, happening in uh, cardiovascular diseases in lupus in hiv in stroke influenza and then drop to 1500 clinical trials for malaria uh, more or less at the same level tb and then moving on to the right, then we see that the number of, uh, of trials which are uh, currently ongoing or uh, have been done for what we call uh, neglected tropical disease or emerging infection, Ebola is one of them, is very minimal. And why is it important? Well, because if we think about the standard evidence pathway that policymakers are using, uh, as of today, the, the standard uh, is an aggregated meta-analysis. And so um, this kind of approach works very well when uh, we, uh, we've we got, uh, um, sorry, I'm trying to, um, we got uh, a, an aggregated meta-analysis Cochrane type, which is showing uh, very clearly a drug working much better than the other one. But in the context of NTD, we don't have that many randomized controlled trials to play with. It is subject to bias. It's unable to tease out the heterogeneity across disease area, methodology, and standard. And uh, we lack uh, the capability of analyzing subgroup because we lack granularity, because what we are actually using is only what is published in the paper and the sort of high-level uh, evidence on, for instance, the efficacy of the drug. And because of this scarcity of data, as I was showing uh, previously from uh, NTDs or uh, emerging infection, we don't have that volume of data. And so this is where we think that uh, our model works better. And Ido was born for one, so the experience uh, done uh, in malaria to collect global malaria data to generate evidence and method to accelerate elimination. And what we have done is we have repurposed the the know-how from malaria into entities and emerging infections. Um, let me give you an example of what it happens and what we do. So in the context of this drug, which is an anti-malarial called Dihydroartemisin piperaquine, which was registered in 2012, a few years after uh, the registration, we managed to compile 26 studies, which were done over a period of 10 years during the development of the drug, assembling more than 7,000 patients. And we pulled the, uh, this individual patient data. And by the way, notice that actually none of these trials were having very large sample size. So per se, they could not uh, have a detailed uh, look specifically at uh, uh, children. And I just explain why children is important in that case. Well, when we compiled all these data, we noticed that the kids who are in between 10 to 15 kilos were more likely uh, to fail the treatment. And when we looked at that, we realized that actually with the current uh, dosage that they were receiving, uh, their risk was doubling when the treatment was under a certain level of uh, piperaquine uh, dosage. And that was done, that was due to the fact that the uh, pediatric formulation of that drug was based on adult pharmacokinetic uh, and pharmacodynamic knowledge and, and was assumed to be the same than adult, but it was not actually working uh, as such. And, and it was only when we were able to compile all these data together that we figured out that this particular population of small kids were not receiving the right dose. On the basis of this work, we did some modeling work on PK and we proposed an adjusted uh, weight-based um, uh, approach to WHO and WHO changed the recommendation in 2015 of the use of the weight band for this particular um, ACT. So in, in other words, and this is very close to what you have seen in the video, what we start with is uh, looking at individual patient data, we curate the data, it's put in the repository, and then we generate a specific outcome, uh, which will uh, hopefully benefit to researchers, policymakers, or regulators. And this is very much a joint effort. 
the investigators which have, who have shared the data with Edo uh, are part of this uh, secondary use of the data and we usually publish together if they wish to do so and this is very much a joint effort. This is the portfolio that we are working and as you can see this is it has expanded from malaria to medicine quality, Ebola, non-malaria fever illness, Chagas disease, and this is very much a work that we are doing with uh, DNDI, Vichy leishmaniasis, schistosomiasis, salt transmitted elements, and, and a few more uh, neglected diseases. And, and again, very close uh, collaboration with DNDI. Uh, I will take a very quick example on Vichy leishmaniasis. As you can see here, we looked at uh, the efficacy of the drugs in between region, and we see that uh, with the same dose and formulation used for uh, the uh, Vichy Lechman disease, let, let, let's uh, take the example of anthotericin B liposomal, we found uh, a very substantial difference of efficacy between Asia and Africa. And this extreme variation in treatment response uh, observed by drugs and region are not yet to date uh, explained. And what we are trying to do is we went back to all the data which has been ever conducted in the last 30 years, more or less, and we identify about 30,000 uh, or 150 studies which represent 30,000 patient data. And we are currently in the process in partnership with the NDI to assemble all these data together and being hopefully uh, in a few months uh, in position of doing what I was describing for malaria, individual patient uh, data meta-analysis um, and, and this will help us understanding the heterogeneity that we see uh, in all this treatment arm which has been tested in, in the past. Some as a relatively large sample size and we believe that we will be able to have conclusion that we can't get from simply looking at one paper after the other. Um, I'll pass that for the sake of, uh, of time. Uh, but what we are doing when we are looking at that, we are identifying factors associated with poor treatment efficacy. And often it's young children, pregnant women, patients with comorbidities, patients having uh, over treatment, uh, which are interacting with the treatment, poor quality medicine or regional diversity, which affect the efficacy of the treatment. And, and this is what we need to tease out. We need to understand all these parameters because especially for NTDs, when we are reaching a, a point where we are close to elimination, it's only because we will understand those particular populations who don't respond very well, but we will be able to finish the work of elimination. And I'll move on to say one word on COVID because uh, I'm supposed that all of you are concerned about COVID and um, very much in the same spirit that what was described by the NDI and described by us at IDO, we, um, uh, decided to work together in in, a, in something which is much bigger than the, these two organizations, but creating uh, and fun, yeah, uh, uh, managing uh, what we call the COVID-19 Clinical Research Coalition um, in order to actually do what I, I just described, try to work together prospectively to assemble data, facilitate, facilitate and accelerate research, but also um, pull all the data together in order to gain statistical power. And I think in the case of this emergency, it's only because we will be working collectively that we will be able to tackle uh, the challenge that we have in front of us for all of us uh, in all the communities around the world, but with a particular concern that uh, a lot more attention should be given to uh, resource processing. Thank you very much.